from where we started where I started off last year joining you guys to where it is now. It's grown in leaps and bounds. So mm. it's only going to get better from there. Well, it's grown massively even since I've been on it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I'm hoping this podcast can break the record for the most amount of downloads. At the moment, it's still Silverstone. But Saudi nearly broke that, and that was published a bit later than what we normally do. So Jared said he's absolutely on this. Sorry, Phil, what were you saying? Oh, was that just the uh, the delay? I think because I just went onto the live stream and, it, and I heard your voice again. I think, is he, is he talking again or is that just a repeat? There was a delay, I think. There was a delay. <laughs> okay. Just stop talking. I thought, wait, what, what's going on? <laughs> so, yes, thank you to everybody who's uh, joined us live on YouTube. We'll, um, we're going to get this all sorted as fast as possible to get into the show but because we've had a few people mention that it takes too long and i understand that but we've got to share it around we've got to do the description the, the thumbnail and everything that all has to be done after it after it goes live so just bear with guys i don't know if you guys saw as well but mercedes have launched a protest they it's have the yeah results so it's breach alleged breach of article 48.8 of the 2021 fia F1 sports and regulations. Hmm. So, i.e., they've, re- they've protested the race results. Is that pretty yep. much it? Yeah. Yep. I don't think they'll get anywhere personally. I don't think they'll want to decide this in the stewards' room like that. I'll be honest. Nah. But I don't think they say they'll want it to go to decide it that way either, but they're always going to protest. Didn't they say after Brazil they won't be protesting because they want to win championships on the racetrack? <laughs> I'm sure they did, but the, that's you know that's the kind of thing you would it say, is. wouldn't it? Let's be honest. Yeah, you. It, you wouldn't yeah. be like, oh yeah, no, we're not going to let, let this go. We're going to do everything we can. I, I wouldn't expect them to run over. Mm. Is it? I'm just looking at the regulations now. That's called 48. It's not to do with the safety car. Yeah, so we'll get into this during show. I'm sure yeah, yeah. But it, it was it was strange. I think anybody admit that it was a bit odd how it all transpired because they said one thing and then. Went back on it at the last minute, well, which is hmm. it's Michael Massey for you. It is Michael Massey, but do, does he actually? No, he does control the safety car and stuff, doesn't he? He's not a steward, obviously, but he does control. He's like, a the race director. Car. He's a race director, so in the end, everything at the end, it goes. You know, goes I mean, through him. Oh, there's yeah. there's all these people because I'm on the NASCAR <laughs> side too and all these idiots NASCAR people who watch watch it like not just dri- I mean, the drivers aren't as much idiots but like announcers and other people they're like well if this guy or our guy had done that it would be like the end of days I'm like yeah well that guy does that all the time too because he makes it like the WWE because he's an idiot you know like <laughs> it's WWE yeah he, he does he does try to don't they it's very um he I must mean, that, enjoy it. He must, you can tell like he's what is he really enjoying like messing with Red Bull and the Mercedes for all I mean, this. I get it because it must be annoying having to listen to both Karen Horner and and oh, yeah. Toto Wolf whining and then that other Wheatley and then whoever and Ron Meadows. Ron Meadows. The They're all as bad as each other. Yeah, that's the whole oh, yeah. point. Like I think at the end of the day. I, I think one of the negatives, I mean, they can say it's a positive. I think one of the negatives that has come of many that seemingly have come out here in recent weeks is the fact that we're hearing that team communication towards um, Massey because it also proves that Massey's incompetent too. And then that also you kind of or overwhelmed or whatever you want to say. I mean, incompetence versus overwhelmed is a big deal, deal but difference, but you know, it just seems like he's out of depth in regards to how I'm doing this. And then you have these idiots all yelling at you too. I'm sure you won't be able to deal with that either. So it's a lot, isn't it? It's very hard to keep you cool when people shouting all around you. I figure, I figure that never, I mean, it may have went on with Charlie Whiting, but I would also assume that Charlie Whiting also had a very, had an iron fist and basically, you know, would, use very few words, a la Kimi Raikkonen, and they would get the point. Um, that's the difference. Yeah, that's the I, thing. He's, he's a new guy. I so think he can kind of take advantage of it, can't yeah. he? Just, um, just, 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 just a point, Ryan. I know we'll get into this. So, 
the one the one point right coffee has just answered his own question he he said um and we'll get into this but i, I just want to make this point now because he because he had said about when or if drivers can overtake under the safety car and he said whether it's everyone whether it's someone whether it's no one the wording of the, of the official documentation says any cars it doesn't say all cars it says any cars so by that very definition, that is at the discretion of the race director. But we'll get into it. Yeah. Shall we get into it? Ready? Yeah. Yep. Let's see, here we go. After nearly nine months of globe trotting across four continents, Formula One's epic 2021 season came to an exciting and controversial climax today in Abu Dhabi. Welcome to back to the Grid Talk podcast, everybody. This is episode number 162, where we're going to be reviewing the 2021 Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. I'm your host, George Harrison, and joining me today are Tom Downey from EF1. Hello. And Phil Matthew from the Grip Strip podcast. Hello. Right, lads. So fair to say this has been an extremely eventful race. And for this is your official spoiler warning, everybody, because we're going to obviously be getting into it. Why you would want to listen to this show without, list- without actually watching the race, I don't know. But we're going to say it. So Max Verstappen has won the 2021 Formula One World Championship in, a, it's fair to say, controversial circumstances. There was always going to be something that happened during this race. You always felt it was going to happen. But for a while, Phil, it did seem as though Hamilton was going to run away with it. He was well clear of Verstappen, despite Sergio Perez doing his best to hold him up. Despite uh, Verstappen's lunge on the first lap, he was relatively clear. But a crash for Nicholas Latifi in the closing, closing stages brought out the safety car and it absolutely turned everything on its head. Yeah, it was uh, the timing of that incident. You can't control that, of course. Latifi was getting into it with Mick Schumacher. Uh, might have incurred a little damage, probably had a little clag on the tires, and he lost it going into that, whatever, I guess, turn 14 um, exit and uh, crashed. And, of course, it's a very tight section, so they were going to always have to call a full safety car. Um, Lewis had more or less controlled the race from the lights out, and the you know Red Bull threw everything but the kitchen sink at him, uh, to try and get around, try to manipulate, go and get a hat, whatever, undercuts, you know, they had Sergio hold them up. Um, I personally appreciated the race that both Sergio and Lewis had because it kind of, we could, we may get into it, we may not, but it kind of shows the difference um, in tactic and, um, you know, being around other cars and how you're supposed to kind of maneuver. Yes, you could say it was a little bit dodgy at times, but even then it was within reason. And um, Lewis had control, Mercedes had control, but in the end they let it get out of their control um, before the safety car um, had came out because with the VSC that came out for Giovinazzi, um, they didn't use that opportunity um, to pit stating they were going to lose track position. They said the same thing with the full safety car when Lewis was close to the pit entrance and probably could have pitted and still um, kept or been around the race lead. And in the end, it would have been a one lap shootout anyway, based on what they decided. Um, it's it, the fact of the matter is he did what he had to do today. Um, and uh, I can't be disappointed by that, um, by how he, you know, how he handled himself and how he drove today as a, as a fan of his and how he handled himself after the race in defeat. Um, he is, you know, it may have not been as it, similar to 2016, I'm sure, but it have been similar to 2007 with him and his teammate. But the fact of the matter is Lewis Hamilton uh, was behind most of the year to Max Verstappen and Red Bull. Red Bull was a better car overall through the majority of the year. Lewis had had a great couple of months here at the end of the season, kind of akin to Tony Stewart making an American or NASCAR reference in 2011. Uh, but in the end, um, Max Verstappen and Red Bull had always were the more advantageous team. They were the more strategically uh, uh, 
I guess, the better strategic team. And Max Verstappen is your 2021 world champion because of it. And you have to give him credit and give the team uh, credit for building a great car, Honda and all, for doing a great job as well in their last official race as a um, engine manufacturer. Yeah, absolutely. No, I agree with everything you said there. I mean, uh, this what one thing one thing that you cannot take away from either Verstappen or Hamilton is that both gave absolutely everything today, as they have been throughout the whole season. They left nothing on the table, um, and there was, like I said, there was controversy about the about the move that Verstappen put in on on Hamilton on the first lap. The stewards decided not to investigate that, and I think that's fair. I think. I personally think that Verstappen really overstretched himself with that and left Lewis no choice but to go off the track. Um, the only de- bit of debate around that for me was whether Hamilton gave back the advantage, but it was it happened so fast it was kind of hard for us to tell, um, at least for me to tell anyway. Um, but yeah, it's I mean you have, you have to say congrats to Max Verstappen, but like I said, both Hamilton and Verstappen this year they've been incredible. Verstappen uh, becomes the first non-Mercedes champion of the turbo hybrid era. The first guy not driving a Mercedes since 2013 with Sebastian Vettel to win the championship. The first Dutch world champion. I mean, Tom, as a as a Verstappen fan, you must be understandably elated after that. Uh, yeah, I mean, I was, you know, I've had about an hour and a bit to calm down, but it was uh, <laughs> when that that last lap, I was sitting here, and then it was it was sort of like, oh, hang on, hang on a minute, Max is, Max is right behind him. Hang on a minute, Max is on softs. And then it was like, hang on a minute, we've got a lap. Is that not the most F1 2021 thing you have ever heard? And, you know, we went into this race tied on points and then it comes down to a last lap shootout. Yeah, absolutely elated for Max. Um, you know, he, he's my favourite driver on the field and I get he splits opinion. I like him, you know, not everybody likes everyone and, and that's cool. Um, but I was so, so happy and relieved to see him cross that line, P1, because for a long time in this race, he was pretty much dead and buried, and Hamilton was on course to win an eighth championship. Um, so much so that I had a post typed with the graphic ready to post. Um, I put it, I started writing it out on lap 52. And I put it into Facebook on lap 50, 54. End of lap 54, I put it on right before Latifi had his accident. And um, yeah, he goes to show F1. You can, you know, it's not over until it's over. But yeah, um, it's just, there, there are a lot of things from this race, which which I think we'll need to discuss, which we're going to get onto now. Um. But yeah, it was a, I'm just I'm just so happy, and it's not because he's specifically beaten Hamilton, and it's not anything against Hamilton. It's just Hamilton has won so much, and I think that's probably why I like Max so much is that he's coming in, he sort of almost like challenged the establishment a bit, and he's it's nice to see a different drivers constructor this year. Yeah, I know what you mean. I think I think a lot of people, a lot of neutrals, would have wanted that in a way because. It is someone different winning the championship. It's a different team winning the championship as well for the first time in this era of Formula One. And it sends us into 2022 when the regulations change, when the cars change so much with a hell of a lot more unknowns because it's not Mercedes that are the undisputed kings anymore. Yes, Mercedes have won the Constructors' Championship. That was confirmed today, especially after Sergio Perez had to retire in the closing stages. Uh, But we have a new Drivers' Championship uh, champion in Max Verstappen. Because the only the only other champions we had going into next year were Vettel and Alonso, and they're sort of getting to the latter parts of the career, as is Lewis Hamilton. So it's kind of like who is the going to be the next guy? You know, it, kind of in a way a bit similar to the early nineties after the Senna sadly passed away and, and Prost had retired and Mansell had retired. It was like who's who's going to be the next guy? And that was Schumacher back then. And it seems like Verstappen is the first of this new generation to to be a champion. You know, he literally is. So. But yeah, it wasn't without controversy, like we've mentioned. It, in typical 2021 fashion with F1, there's always something. There's always something going to happen. Um, I'm sure some people have bemoaned Sergio Perez for the way he defended against Hamilton, but most people have absolutely no issue with it. 
yeah, it was forceful, but there was no dirty racing in there. And it played a vital role because I think Hamilton was about eight seconds ahead of Verstappen and it basically became a second after that. Perez did an outstanding job to hold up Hamilton. He really did. So I have massive respect for him for that. He did a really good job. Um, but the controversy is not so much with the drivers, Phil, but more with the race director and the communication that was going on around it. Obviously, after after Latifi's crash, I think it was about five or six laps still to go. They had to bring out the safety car. Nobody will bemoan that. But there was a lot of lapsed cars between Hamilton and Verstappen, I think five or so. So it's not uncommon for them to allow the drivers to unlap themselves. But they said that they weren't going to unlap them. And yeah. then right before the safety car came in, I think literally as they were going through the horseshoe, the new horseshoe section after the two straights, they said, oh, yeah, no, they can unlap themselves. And they went. And then Hamilton went from having about five cars between him and Verstappen to none. And Verstappen literally being right side right by side him. with him. Yeah. 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 And uh I think, you know, we talked about it last week on the show uh, during the Saudi Grand Prix. Um, how race direction and Michael Massey and Tom had a very passionate um, uh, rant or, you know, Me, comment ever. Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> about about his buddy over there. And um, and the fact of the matter is Michael Massey in the last two weeks has proven that he doesn't know what the hell he's doing. And um, it's it's the it's akin to NASCAR. It's akin to WWE. I get that Netflix has a big deal and people are making that comment. I get that there's WWE aspects to this and because it's an American run uh, motorsport with Liberty Media, but you you don't make up rules as you go. If you, it, there's, I could say there's a precedent. You could say that after what happened last week with Mick, when he crashed and they ran three laps under yellow and then they red flagged, you could have literally done the same thing straight away, red flag the race, neutralized it and made given everybody a, the shot to change your tires. They could have swapped everybody out on the on the um, track or in the pits or whatever. And then they would add, what is it, three laps with one lap of DRS, um, possibly, or they might have given DRS. I don't know how they would have been, but it's like they could have done a full restart. They could have done a, a safety car, like a rolling start and have three laps, you know, instead of what they did, but they made their decision. Uh, and it wasn't, I mean, I mean, I know Tom knows, it seems like he knows a rule book, like the back of his hand. Um, for me, um, that's not good. Uh, George just dropped out. Um, but yeah. in terms of, in terms of how, uh, this race was uh, decided in that sense. I mean, I think Max and Red Bull had done what they needed to do. They were pushing all the buttons. They moved. They made Sergio retire from a podium because they were trying to figure out whatever they could to try to give themselves as many um, opportunities as they could. They put him on tires that no matter what, we're going to always give him an advantage. And fundamentally, um, whether he had... I mean, the way the pace he had, he made two and a half seconds by the end of the race. I um, mean, that was in one sector. So what's to say he couldn't have passed all, all those cars on literally lay over and he has a lunge into the hair, into the turn nine hairpin or whatever. I mean, he's been doing it all year. So uh, I think race direction, we shouldn't know about race direction. The announce, the way we have the sound from them, all that. I think is a big problem. I also don't think Michael Massey knows what he's doing either. And it's a problem when you're the supposed to be the pinnacle of motorsport. But you know what? In the grand scheme of things, Max Verstappen won his 10th race. He's a world champion, um, younger, one of the youngest world champions ever. First uh, non-British or German driver since Kimi. So all these Kimi connections oh, yeah. coming along. Uh, so in his last race, when he was literally sitting on a yacht, getting drunk, drinking vodka, um, because his car quit. Um, I mean, that that's, there's, there's a lot of things, uh, there, but I mean, Tom to, to, I know you're passionate about race direction. So, I mean, <laughs> in whatever, I mean, it goes back, we could go back to the, the first lap instance with 
Max and Lewis, and I know we'll probably disagree on that, but then we also can look at this particular instance where uh, they made that decision as late as they did. Did you feel, do you think that there was another way that that could have been handled where it could have been a little cleaner and it could have still been the straightforward, it could have been a straightforward head-to-head battle, which we uh, truly want? Well, uh, you're referring to lap one? Well, not not lap one. I'm talking about uh, the uh, end just, more. Uh, lap uh, one's uh, a uh, whole uh, other the, thing. All right, okay. The, the end of the race, um, looking at it from a Red Bull and Mercedes points of view, Red Bull, the only thing they were ever going to do was whatever or whatever um, Mercedes, Mercedes weren't going to do because if you do the same thing, we saw Max was not going to catch him on pure pace. Lewis was just too quick today. Exactly. And that was why for so much of this race, I thought Lewis was... Was going to win. I thought he was going to be champion. Um, but when 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 Red Bull pitted under the VFC, um, when they pitted Max, as as soon as I saw that VFC come out, as soon as I heard that Hamilton was staying out, I knew Verstappen was going to pit, and I was expecting Hamilton to stay out, and he did exactly that. So I knew Verstappen was going to pit. I didn't expect him to go to a set of hards. Um, and I think if he'd have gone to a set of mediums, it might have been a slightly different story. But he wasn't really able to take out that much time. But then when when he got to when it came to the safety car at the end, you know that safety car. Um, as soon as I saw Max dive into the pits, it was just like, yeah, yeah, there's a this this is happening you know it's um to 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 coin a phrase i use quite like it's shit or bust at this point it's like yeah you know, you know it, it's it's he needed to do something to win yeah. and i didn't know if we were going to go racing again i thought we were going to finish behind the safety car and then obviously what you know we had we had what we had um and then with with, with the confusion over lap cars overtaking um which you know, which which we'll we'll talk about in a moment. Um, Max was then suddenly in a position where things had swung in his favour. There was a huge stroke of luck in that because had that safety car not come out, we'd be looking at a very different result right now. Mm-hmm. We'd be looking at Lewis Hamilton how, would you know would have just made history, absolute history. But instead, Max has made history. You know, he's the first ever Dutch F1 world champion, um, and. I'm going to say you cannot say it is not deserved because he has driven his socks off this year. Yeah, there have been incidents, but both drivers have had incidents this year. Both drivers have had collisions. Both drivers have had penalties, have had reprimands. I mean, I think every driver up and down the field has had penalty points or a reprimand or you know, time penalty. Everybody's had something at some stage. Yeah. So no driver has a 100% squeaky clean record, and you wouldn't expect that. But it's been such a such an exhilarating season to watch, and to have it finish like the way it finished, um, it is. It has just gone up and down, up and down, um, and then the the. the the, the, right, let's get into the issue around the safety car because let's not put it off any longer. Um, I want to pick up on something you said as well, Phil, because you said that you re- made reference to Saudi when it was um, when it was red flagged. Yeah, the difference with Saudi was they needed to inspect the barrier, mm-hmm. which is why it needed to be red flagged because they had to have personnel on the track and and the Saudi track was fundamentally a lot closer because he was a street circuit. Yes. Where, where Latifi had his accident, he was pretty close to an escape road and there was a tractor right behind him. So I think that's why they were able to get away with the safety car. Um, and, and yeah, so the safety car and everything was the, was the right call. I don't think it yeah. should have been a red flag, but I probably would say that anyway because yeah. because I'm a Verstappen fan. Um, but then when um oh god when uh, when um when there was the 
Uh, the, the, so, uh No, no, no. When, when there was the message saying that, lap, it literally saying lap drivers cannot overtake, and then another message saying lap drivers can overtake. One thing we need to stress is it says, um, it doesn't say all drivers must overtake. It says drivers may overtake. It doesn't specify that it says every single driver. So, I mean, for, for, from Massey's point of view, what is really the point in unlapping, say, um, Vettel and um, Schumacher? Stroll or whoever, yeah. Yeah, yeah whoever's like right at the back. And we've always said this season, let's go racing. And that's what we did. Um, also, people would like to rub on Christian Horner for the way he can, for the way he and Jonathan Whiteley and Red Bull conduct themselves over the team radio. And even as a Red Bull fan, I agree that their attitude sometimes is not right. But the way Toto was shouting, oh, Mikey, Mikey, it's not fair, it's not fair. Again, I get why Toto is obviously aggrieved that this has happened today, but it, there does seem to be quite a double standard at the moment in F1 with people taking the mickey out of Red Bull for doing it when I would almost argue that Red Bull are perhaps... Sorry, I would argue that Mercedes are perhaps they're worse at it at the moment. And I see our Lord and Saviour George has returned. <laughs> Yes, uh, sorry about that, guys. My uh, my wonderful son, you might have got a brief glimpse of there, decided he wants to turn the Wi-Fi off, so I've just barricaded it into uh, some of the furniture. But, yeah, <laughs> on, 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 I mean, I don't know what you guys were saying. I didn't get all the conversation about the um, about the safety car restart at the end. I, I guess I guess some people will probably say maybe that they shouldn't, you know, why did they let the front, the front lap cars go and the back ones not go? It's just because they need to get it clear out of the way. It's not to, like... You know, it's, it's not, not to give some an, kind of advantage or anything. Yeah, and it's not an FIA conspiracy. No, for the absolutely love not. Of God. No. no, it was. It, there was no conspiracy with that. No. The manipulate or the way they've that done it they, before. I'm sure yeah, they've, they've done, done it before. It before. And it's, they done it it's before. they. It's a case of I guess all the communications, the timing, the way it happened, all the all those things kind of conspired there how it, it i say conspired it wasn't a conspiracy at the end of the day max was top and won he had the better tires he won 10 races he's a world champion and um that's what it is we're and we're gonna get into it we're gonna get into everybody that everything that happened behind them because we barely watched or saw anything that happened behind them anyway <laughs> yeah yeah i mean I, yeah, and the thing is, Verstappen, you know, he had the chance, he had to gamble. I was saying it all the way through the race, you know, he's, he's genuinely slower than Hamilton on the same tyres here. The, the Red Bull was not as fast as his Mercedes around this track. They had to try something different, and they did, and it paid off. That's why you take that gamble. That's why you make that extra stop. He had to do it, and I'm sure some people probably say, oh, why didn't Hamilton pick? He couldn't. He was ahead. He wouldn't have had the gap, probably. So, to do that, again, would have just been plain silly. I don't get why they would have done that, but... No. You know, and like at the end of the day, I, I've said it for a lot of this season. Both both the drivers have been excellent. They've been the standout in the field. You know, they've got some like almost ten wins each or something like that by the end of the season. I, if either one of them won the championship, it would have been fair enough. And I'm sure people always like to pick holes in things. I remember when Hamilton won the title in 08, they were saying, "Oh, Glock moved over." Um, there's, there's a few other examples so, of it as well. You know, it's just people being salty. And at the end of the day, Stappen's yeah. won it. I don't. I don't fit personally. I don't think, apart from maybe that move on lap one, which was borderline. But you know, you got to go for a gap when it's there. I suppose that's what Stenner always used to say. Apart from that move on lap one, I don't think that Verstappen did anything wrong driving wise today at all. You can't blame him. If there's going to be anybody kind of a portion blame to, it's maybe the FIA and the stewards. But it's how it goes sometimes. Sometimes it goes for you, sometimes it goes against you. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we've seen it a lot this season where you play the hand you were dealt in F1. And for a lot of this race, it favoured Mercedes. Um, but there was just just a slight swing. And, um, as, you know, there was, a, there was a slight shift in the, uh, in, 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 in the momentum. And I've just thought of a conspiracy. Because you know, I like to stay the pot. Um, here we go, buckling. 
this is all Mick Schumacher's fault. He was scrapping to, with, to protect to protect his dad. Yeah, it has you, to be. He took you, out the team. You got it. You got it. You knew what I was going to say. <laughs> he took out the team. He crashed to, to yeah. cause a safety car last week. He crashed in, in, yeah. to, to affect the race. This week, he he got into Latifi or got was racing side by side with a Williams in a yeah. in a tight spot when the race could have been over. And, yeah, uh, you, yeah. You you read my mind. That was absolutely what I was going to say. That's obviously what's happened here. Hundred percent. I, I mean, to be fair, Mick Schumacher <laughs> needed to go and prove himself as a Formula Two world champion to prove that he can maneuver his race car with the best in the world. Um, you it's know, a shame Mister Tifi was against. Yeah, that's the problem, and the fact that he's driving a Haas. Uh, but the, but you know, you know, the ghost of Michael Schumacher, and basically the closest <laughs> thing since Michael Schumacher, since maybe, um, you know. And that their ironies and all that, because Yas got destroyed by him uh, for however long it was that they drove together as teammates too. But uh, yeah, we'll we'll blame it on Haas and Schumacher. That's what it'll be. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna go with. Yeah, to make my. Could you imagine, right? Could you imagine if it was one of the Alpha Tauris that had binned it into the wall? The conspiracy theories yeah. would have been going into overdrive. <laughs> Oh my God, well, Yuki yeah. Sonoda is liable to do it any time at any place. Yeah. But he actually finished fourth today, so yeah, he did a great job this credit. weekend. Yeah, yeah. It's best weekend this season so far. Oh, it was the season in total. Sorry, I should say. And, and, yes. and for, for Alpha Tauri in general, yeah, they came four, came four and five. Yeah, great, the great weekend for Alpha Tauri as well. Yeah, great for both Red Bull teams. So yeah, I'm sure people will argue long and tonight about it. Mercedes, I don't know if we mentioned it, but oh, we have mentioned it. Sorry, the Mercedes have protested it. They'll argue well, long and tonight, but I don't. I don't personally see anything changing. I don't think they're going to affect the race result unless, unless Hamilton and Verstappen collided on track or something. I, I don't think the stewards are going to do anything major, to be honest. Um, be interested to see what happens to Massey. I'm sure that people are calling for his head. Obviously, probably a lot of Hamilton fans more than Verstappen fans are calling for his head, but. Yeah, we'll we'll see. I mean, and what and whatever your guys' opinions are, let us know on Twitter. Tweeters at F1 Chronicle, and obviously we do go out live on YouTube, so you can get involved with the uh, live discussion as well. Just put a comment in there, or put a comment in the video once it's gone out live as well. The video proper, and we can uh, we can respond to you. We want to hear you guys' opinions because at the end of the day, everybody's going to have one. Every Formula One fan is going to have one on this race. Um, yeah, we've dedicated almost the length of a. A normal podcast to just to, just the front two. So let's 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 get into the order as we uh, as we all always do. Um, but third place after after Sergio Perez's late retirement, the benefactor benefitor from that has been Carlos Sainz for, uh, for Phil and you know Ferrari just rounding off what has been a good season for them. It's been a, it's been a great recovery from what had been ter- a terrible 2020. They pretty much re- they pretty much confirmed third place anyway before this race, yeah. but that's the underlining of it. A great job by Carlos Sainz today to get third. Yeah, the smooth operator did a great job today, and I just now think of Connor Moore's impression of him now every time I see Carlos Sainz's name um, <laughs> because it's so good and it's so dead on. But the difference is, um, just like his Tiger Woods impression, I don't think that, Connor Moore could drive the way that Carlos Sainz drives. Um, he has done such a great job this year. Usually they talk about Ferrari and they say it's very difficult to get in there and kind of in, incorporate yourself into that team. There's always been issues over time with drivers, especially the like the hierarchy of who's number one, number two. I think now with Charles Leclerc, it's more of a balance. But what has also came about is that Carlos Sainz, I think, through all, I think for him, he's been in so many teams. He's been through the Red Bull crap. And so I think he's more prepared than most drivers would be to come into Ferrari and actually perform. And they made a good car this year. They were, And it was back and forth with them and McLaren for a while this year. But at the later point, last part of the season, the Ferrari is just so consistent. And fifth, what is it, I think 15 races in a row for Carlos Sainz point scoring, uh, you know, and, and his qualifying is not, he's that's something he's going to want to work on during this off season. But I mean, he he's overtaking, I mean, whatever their bogus overtaking number thing that they gave to Sebastian Vettel. I mean, I think for like overtakes that actually matter or have any consequence, I think 
Carlos Sainz probably leads that uh, category. And he did a great job today, great job overall, um, finishing top 10 in the uh, driver's standings. And, you know, you just uh, – and he, he was able to stay with uh, – um, Charles Leclerc all year, and and it, there's something he finished. What is it? He worked out. He finished fifth in the world championship. So, I mean, best result for him in his career. Finished behind the best of the rest, the Red Bulls and the Mercedes. And it, it was a tight battle between him, his buddy Lando, and uh, Charles Leclerc. But great job by Ferrari this year. Great job by Carlos Sainz. And I think there's a lot of positives to get into for them as they move towards 2022 and possibly trying to answer the bell and, and get back into the fight with the top two teams. Yeah, definitely. It's been, a, it's been a great year for Ferrari at the end of the day. And you're right. I didn't realize that he'd actually got best of the rest in the driver's championship. I have a color signs being up finishing fifth place, just amazing consistency by him. And he's only 25 and a half points off of Sergio Perez in the Red Bull. That's that's a hell of a performance. If your debut season in Ferrari as well, when a lot of drivers, we said it right at the start of the season, a lot of drivers that move teams, they all struggle. But the one guy who hit the ground running was Carlos Sainz, and it really shows. He beat Charles Leclerc fair and square. Yes, Charles Leclerc's had some bad luck, without a doubt, but so has Carlos Sainz over this year. So... Fair play to the guy. He has been excellent and he fully deserves his third place today. A very consistent, controlled drive today. It's a nice round enough to see Ferrari up there on the podium. Um, and a great day as well for Alpha Tauri, Tom, even though they didn't get fifth place in the Constructors' Championship in the end. Fourth for Yuki Tsunoda, his best finish in Formula One. Fifth for Pierre Gasly. Again, he's up there. He's in the top five. Great performance by them. But overall, and we'll get into it in our season review, which will be tomorrow when that goes out. But it's been a year of a missed opportunity, really, for Alfa Tauri. Yeah. Um, I don't even know about a year of missed opportunity because that Alfa Tauri is not, well, was not the best, the fifth best car on the grid. Um, and we talked a fair amount about how... Um, how uh, Gasly would effectively overdrive that car's abilities. But today, really good result for them. Really, really good. Um, I think six is probably about where they would be in the constructors. I mean, they'd love to be like fourth or something, but with Ferrari and McLaren in front of them and then sort of Renault as well, sort of around them, realistically, that's not going to happen. Um, I, You know, Sonoda, I think... I think he went super long on the mediums. I think he was about 30 laps in or something before he fitted. I can't remember, uh, pitted even. I can't remember exactly. But he he really, really, really eked out those tyres. Got lucky a bit then with the VSC and everything, which meant he could one stop and it put him into a better position in general. But if you'd have said to Alfa Tari, you know, you've qualified P, what it turned as what P6 and Gassi was P12. If you'd have said to them, P4 and 5, bearing in mind uh, Checo had to retire and Max won, and there's only a, and there's a Ferrari ahead of you, they'd have taken that. So, you know, you know anybody would have taken that. So, yeah, it, 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 was a, it was a really good result for them. Much like the rest of the field, we didn't see an awful lot of them, mainly because they would drive their own race and there was a little bit of a ding-dong going on in front of them. Yeah, I mean the the emphasis was definitely uh, definitely rightfully on the top two during this uh, one. We, yeah. didn't, we didn't see a hell of a lot of him, particularly Gasly. But you know, so not a fair play to the kid. I mean, he spun off a lot of times. He's made a lot of mistakes, like he did a week ago in Saudi. But he kept the car together this week, and he did, he did a standout job, to be honest. Yeah, and I I, I just want to talk a bit a bit about Sandra anyway because I was pretty harsh on him earlier in the season, and yet he did have a pretty rough start to the season. You know, he had big spins in. Um, uh, Imola and a few others, uh, you, uh, you know, he, he caused a red flag in Baku in, in Quali and all the rest of it. He has, he does seem like he's beginning to settle into that car quite nicely. Um, it is almost a bit of a shame that we now have completely different regulations for 2022 because there will be, you know, he, he'll, he'll have to adapt or change to, to that car as well as everybody else. But I do hope that he is beginning to get more bedded into Formula One. Um, because he he has improved significantly in the sort of flyaway races of this season. 
he has done really, really well. Um, he's he's kept his nose clean. He's kept his, uh, you know, he he sort he sort of kept himself out of the limelight because we because I refer to Red Bull as that pressure cooker environment, and that's absolutely what it is. Um, so see, seeing Sonoda sort of just just go almost a bit under the radar, just start start to flourish, start to start to really get in. That's really good, and I'm really looking forward to seeing him next year. Yeah, me too. I'm looking to see, looking forward to see how he kicks on next year. Because at the end of the day, it was his debut year in F1. He's only like 21, 22 years old or something like that, I think. So, it's, you know, he's definitely got massive amounts of time to improve. And I think he does have a lot of potential. He just needs to be more consistent. But more drives like this, definitely to end the year as well. It's what he needs. So let's see what happens with him next year. Um, and Valtteri Bottas was given some special overalls this uh this weekend he got all blue overalls i'm not sure if it's meant to signify finland or what but it was his last race for mercedes today uh but phil he wasn't really able to influence the guys up front he kind of got stuck in the midfield a bad start put him back there and we didn't really see a hell of a lot of him um sixth place it kind of sums up a lot of what his season has been really it sums up why he's being replaced by george russell uh per i mean the fact of the matter is valtteri botas had his times uh, over these five years with Mercedes. He had great moments and won a lot of races for them and helped assist in winning all those constructors championships too. So in that sense, you have to give credit to Valtteri for what he did. Uh, But you look at the team play that Red Bull was able to do today, and that was strictly because even though Max had a bad start, Sergio was able to make a good start. They were able to maximize, they were able to, get you know decide on strategies and stuff and figure out a way two on one to battle against red bull well when valtteri gets his usual terrible start um it and puts himself in traffic he's not able to get past he's you know leclerc or whoever um he kind of just gets buried and it's unfortunate um you know he's going to stay in f1 of course won't be anywhere near as much limelight on him now. Maybe he'll loosen up a little bit. Maybe he'll feel a little better. Maybe Sauber, Alpha Sauber, actually comes up with a good car for the first time in a decade or something. But um, today was nondescript, uh, but then that's been most of, you know, Valtteri's year outside of his one win he had. And um, it's unfortunate, but... That's where you the performance is, you know, he finished uh, for third in the world championship. But really, there was times this year that um, whether it was Lando Norris, Sergio Perez uh, were better than him for most of the year. And so, I mean, yeah, he finished third in the world championship almost by default. But I think and then now you had Carlos Sainz in there. If he'd had some better runs here and there, maybe he could have been in the mix, too. So. Um, unfortunate end. I mean, they, they gave him a great send off. There's a lot of great, uh, positivity for Valtteri on his way out of Mercedes, but, um, onto different, uh, a different opportunity, multi-year deal at Alfa Romeo to be teammates with, um, Guan Yu Zhou and a whole new look for them as they try to move their way back up the, um, grid after, uh, what they went through this year. Yeah, it's not been a good year for Alfa Romeo at all, really. Um, scored points on the odd occasion, but not where they want to be. They've steadily declined over the last three, four years or so, and not been where they want to be. But Al, you know, Alfa could benefit from a driver of you know of Bottas's experience and the whole new look for them next season. And I think it's a good move for both parties, to be honest. I think the pressure got a bit too much for Bottas at Mercedes. Mercedes want to go to the next level with their young driver, George Russell. Um, so it's understandable, really. So, yeah, not too great from Bottas today. Not so great for Lando Norris today either, but not his fault by the same token. Yet another slow puncture, Tom. That's two times in the last three races he's suffered with this issue. I don't know if it's the way he drives the car or just paint, plain bad luck, but he's still got seven, which is something, but it could have been a whole lot better. Yeah, I had high hopes for Lando today, um, but unfortunately that, that didn't. I didn't come off. I, I, I mean, I, I didn't realistically think he was going to get a podium. I thought Perez would get past him, which is absolutely what he did. Um, but yeah, he, he, 
I don't know if it's the way or something. I don't know if it's the way he, he drives or what, but um, yeah, to, to hear that he had a slow puncture because he had one in, um, he had, he had one in Qatar, which is obviously a new circuit and not designed for F1. And obviously, we saw we saw a raft of punctures there, but um, I think it, it was something to do with that new curve. I want to say around turn five, um, but I can't remember the turn since they've changed a bit. Um, but I do remember seeing that there were new curves introduced. And I saw a picture. I thought they were photoshopped at first because they because they, they look like they, they look like jaws had taken a bite out of out of the curbs or something because they were all jagged and everything. They were really quite bad, and I was quite surprised to see those on a on a racing circuit because I thought if a car goes over those, it's gonna you know it, it's 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 gonna it's gonna chew the car up basically. Thankfully, it didn't. Um, but yeah, just just unlucky for Lando. Um, it it kind of sums up McLaren's season almost. It's like looking so promising at the start, and then just when it boils down to it, just um, just didn't didn't quite happen, unfortunately. No, it, it didn't. I mean, the obviously another key mistake that some people will point to is Norris staying out in Russia when it was raining, but nobody knew that he was going to do that. That was just bad luck, I think. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, it's not the end of the world. Not a terrible result for him. He, he's, he's he's in sixth place in the driver standings. It could have been a lot better. He he was in third for a lot of it. He was even ahead of Bottas for most of the season, but it just fell apart in the end for McLaren. Perhaps because they're focusing more on twenty twenty two, which is understandable, of course, but. Yeah, a good, a good season for McLaren overall. Could have been more, but I think Ferrari's rise has been something that's been very impressive and needs to be, uh, you know, applauded more than what McLaren fans should be, you know, be disappointed in their season because they did score more points 17 races into this campaign, which was the same amount as last campaign. So, yeah. Um, and we'll move on to another team that in the end did get a decent result again today, Fernando Alonso in eighth place, Esteban Ocon in ninth for Alpine. Not spectacular, but solid today, Phil. I think Alonso in particular, he had an extremely long run on the hard tyres at the start of the race and just hung it out there and ended up getting to the points. Yeah, there was a, I think Alpine, after the last couple of races, they've had such great uh, runs with the Qatar Grand Prix for Fred and uh, then Esteban last race at Saudi. Um, it kind of was a little more of a disappointing run, I guess, relative to what they've been doing. But I think it's more coming back to earth. They were able to maximize their situation, uh, optimize points. They had made the the Alpha Tori battle went away a couple of weeks ago because they both scored a lot of points at Qatar. But um, getting double points scored end the year. Fernando Alonso has been out there multiple times saying he's not here for 2021. He's here for 2022. So you assume that they're going to have a response with the new car. Um, you also add the notion of um, the fact that Esteban Ocon is a Grand Prix winner and led the third most laps of any driver this year. And the, you take that combination of Fernando Alonso's experience and consistency and just the hunger to finish out his F1 career on a high note. Um, and Esteban Ocon, who's now gotten over a couple of major hurdles over this last year in real time, um, getting that first podium last year at the secure Grand Prix, then going in now being a Grand Prix winner, battling with the big, big teams, in Mercedes and Red Bull and really standing up more, more times than not uh, to that. Uh, it looks like the, and you have Oscar Piastri back there too. So that's another motivating factor. I would think, even though he has a multi-year deal, you have somebody who's right there, ready to go. Who's going to be um, somebody that Alpine wants to eventually get into Formula One. So there's a lot of good, positive things going on for Alpine. May have not been the best result this weekend that they wanted, but they got the most out of it. Um, the other teams are going to probably be leaving, left wanting, but I think this last three or four, three races have been um, great uh, the, to end the season for Alpine, which at times have been off the pace or been behind other cars that um, we're going to be discussing here shortly. 
Yeah, that's the thing for Alpine. I mean, obviously they won They finished. I think they finished fourth in last year's constructors was Renault, which to then go down to fat, fifth this season may not look that great. But I think, you know, honestly, they've optimized everything they can out of the car. They've they've had podiums. They've had a win. You know, they don't. You know, and they could have potentially things kicked off even more inside. They could have had another win with Ocon. But there we go. In the end, uh, a decent result for them. They're looking forward to 2022. I'm sure they've got a lot of options around that team. Uh, Ocon proving himself to be a very capable competitor against a, a great champion in Alonso. Um, and we'll move on to 10th place. The final point scorer today was Charles Leclerc of Ferrari, Tom. Now, he was running fairly high up in the points early on, um, but made a mistake, made a mistake and let Sonoda get by, by after about 15 laps. I think it was something like that. In all honesty, not the best race by him. At least he has something to show for it. He tried doing another stop, trying to do the two stop. It didn't quite work out for him in the end, though. Yeah, a bit of a miserable day at the office for Leclerc, sadly. Um, just didn't just didn't quite work out for him. Um, shame, really, because he, you know, he was, uh, you know, he, he's he's had a really good season. Um, you know, you know, he's, um, you know, he's had some really really good battles with, um, with with, with his teammate, but it just 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 wasn't to be today. Um, I've got to be honest, I didn't really notice him much in the race because. Again, like we mentioned, there was a there was a lot going on. In, in, there was a lot going on in, in front of him. Um, but yeah, it was a yeah, not 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 a bad day at the office. I mean, it's probably always we're always going to have P three wrapped up in the constructors, um, which which they did, and 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 Julie. So um, hopefully, we can see a bit more of the clan next year. Hopefully, he can be a bit more competitive, and maybe. Maybe we can see him take a race win next year. That'd be nice. Yeah, absolutely. A bit. Two two pole positions this this year and no wins, but it's not through lack of trying for the guy. He has had some bad luck, of course, but I, I don't think he'll be too overly disappointed with this season, particularly because Ferrari have improved their car a lot. They have got back into third in the constructors, but they will want that win. Of course, they want to win. Uh, as always, that's, that's what they want to do. They want to win races and chance for championships. Something that Aston Martin can dream of, of course, as well. I mean, I think they shifted their development focus to 2022 very early. I hope they have for their case anyway, because they've really dropped off in the in the second half of the season. And again, it was another nearly race for them, Phil. I mean, Vettel in 11, Flan Stroll in 13. It's not a surprise. They did all they could, but just missed out on points again. Yeah, and I mean, Vettel was the last uh, car on the lead lap. He was uh, what is it? That's one oh seven, a minute seven behind. So uh, it was unfortunate. There, there were times this year, of course, the great battle he had with Ocon at Hungary. Uh, other flashes of Sebastian Vettel seems to have that mojo back, not to the level that he was when he became a four-time world champion and won the vast majority of his fifty-plus Grand Prix, but. He seems happier and he seems in a great place and he's doing a lot, not just in the car, but outside of the car. And I think his presence there is what will direct how uh, this team, however many guys it's been under, goes. Um, How Stroll F1 Aston Martin goes. Because if he's able to have that motivation and and drive which he has shown at many times this year to really push and they give him good strategies which has never really been a thing that that team has done Sergio Perez proved it over the years when he drove for them for all those years other drivers have over time I think you know the they have potential there's a it's not a money thing um, but if they are really invested in trying to make a good 2022 car we'll see and I think Sebastian Vettel will get the most out of it uh, Stroll had his moments here and there, but then it's Stroll, um, you know, it, and we'll see uh, what he's able to do next year um, with the new regulations. But I honestly think that they're, like you said, George, like their focus went to 2022 very early. They knew they were basically out to lunch. They weren't going to get passed by any of the teams behind them, and they weren't going to be able to compete on a per race basis with the uh, Alpine and Alpha Tori outfits. So they made their bed and decided to take points here and there, kind of grind through this year with the hope that by next year when they get to winter testing, they're going to have something to fight with. 
Um, not just hopefully, at least in the midfield, but def- they're probably hoping for more. Yeah, absolutely. They would have been hoping for more from this year, but they were in a difficult position because they had to develop a car they effectively didn't design, as we've said many, many times before. But 2022, they'll have their own car. They'll have their own philosophy with that, and they'll be able to develop it through the year. So that's all that Aston Martin are up there. I want to see I want to see Vettel uh, challenging the game for podiums more regularly. Uh, I think a lot of us want to see that at the end of the day. Another team challenging at the top is always a good thing for the sport. Um, now, despite some better performances in recent races, Daniel Ricciardo, he came crashing down to earth for this one again. He 12th place. Uh, again, I think like Leclerc, he tried the two-stop, and again, it didn't really work out for him, Tom, in the end, partly because of the safety car. Yeah, um, Daniel he did get stung a bit on uh, with the safety car and VSC and everything, but it was what we sort of almost come to expect from Danny Rick in 2021, you know, barely made it into Q3. Um, then just sort of didn't really go anywhere. Um, you know, it, it, it was a shame. Um, it is a shame, especially as he's had a race win and he did have some good race results this week, uh, this year, but, um, but yeah, today it was just, I really hope he can do something proper next year. Um, you know, his, the, the, the the race win, you could argue, should have been Lando's win. But, you know, that's going back and you know, it's not going to change anything. Um, it's just, you know, he, he, again, like I've said, I'm trying not to repeat myself too much from previous weeks, but he does take a while to bed into a team. We saw it at Renault. Um, but a concern I have is that he's either going to adapt to the regulations next year really quickly or he's going to spend another nine months adapting to them um, because any momentum that he really carried on from this year, because the cars are so different next year, he might, he just might not adapt to them that well, um, or he might not adapt to them that quickly. And then McLaren could be in, 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 in the same position they're in this year. Danny Rick not being on top of it the whole year has cost McLaren P3 in the constructors. I'm putting it out there and I don't really think you can disagree with that because, yes, Lando dropped off a bit, but Lando has been head and shoulders above Danny Rick this season. Even though Danny Rick's had a win, it, you could argue he needs to do better next year. Um, and let's not forget, he's on a two-year contract. If he's going to want an extension for that third year, well, he's going to do something, isn't he? He's got he's got to improve his performance, hasn't he? He's got to he's got to get better. And basically, he's very more consistent. I mean, in Saudi, I think he did a good job. But again, this weekend he's not been that great. Um, I think he was a bit unlucky. But at the same time, he has had some performances where he's just not been there. He's not been at the standard you'd expect. And you are right. I, I agree. I think he. I, I like Daniel Ricciardo by the way. He's probably my, he's my favorite driver on the grid. But at the end of the day. You look at the points, you know, Sainz on 164 and a half, Norris on 160, Leclerc on 159, Ricardo on 115. That's that's a that's a big downturn. That's a big difference. And that that is ultimately what's cost McLaren third. I don't think anybody can deny that. Um, I think even if Ricardo was on it all season, they might still have got fourth, but it would have been a hell of a lot closer than what it was in the end. Um, but yeah, I, I do think Ricardo will do better next year. Like you said, he does take some time to get get used to the team, get yeah. used to the car. Did that with Renault a couple of seasons ago. So I'm I'm hoping and hopeful that next year he'll do better. Um, yeah. Um, sorry, just sorry, oh. I, just, I just want to give a shout out to Martin Brundle um, because he. Uh, I've just seen <laughs> I've just seen something which he said on Sky Commentary. This is too good not to share. Yeah, um, come on. Nico, Nico Rosberg said, um, "Yeah, but the Mercedes drivers do tend to crash a lot." And Brundle <laughs> absolutely roasted him and said, um, not since you left. <laughs> oh, my God. He's, he's done that a few times, hasn't he? He's, oh. he, has, he has destroyed Rosberg a few times. Yeah. It's, I mean, he's so easy. He's such an easy target. He's, he is, I mean, he is a world champion too, just like Max, but he's a D-bag. And Martin loves going and... Um, and and riling them guys up. I, I know he has a good relationship, of course, with Damon and uh, and Jensen. I know Jensen probably gets a few digs on. I think Jensen is like the Just heir apparent, Jess, and and he he can dig in on on Martin much better 
but Nico really doesn't have a response, which makes it great. And that's part, I think that's part of what, that'll be another thing that I'll take joy in is the fact that, that um, Martin roasted him on the final race of the season. Uh, kind of like Mercedes roasted their own strategy. <laughs> He's got the thing is Rosberg now has to sit on that for three months. He's got to live with what, what Bundle said, and he can't okay. really respond. <laughs> it's okay. He'll just make another commercial with his dad and make make that beer that they they are sponsored by. They'll just make another commercial and say, "Well, we're both real champions. We're fancy. We live in Monaco, ha, huh? or whatever the hell they say." <laughs> when you drink, never drive. No thanks. I'm driving. That it's that one, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it's just I was cringeworthy. <laughs> Oh bloody hell! Right. Yeah. So, um, speaking of uh, world champion fathers, one of the one of the sons of world champion today was uh, was the last guy to finish. Only fourteen finishes today. Such was the chaos with the gearbox failures and spins and and all sorts going on. Mick Schumacher, ironically, probably one of his highest finishes this season. Fourteenth in the hats. Um, his teammate didn't even start the race because he uh, contracted uh, contracted COVID nineteen before the race. So Nikita Mazepin couldn't start the race. Uh, Mick Schumacher finished 14th. I'm not sure if Latifi was having problems, to be fair, before his, his crash, but fair play to Schumacher, Phil. He, he did have a fight with him pretty much the entire race. Yeah, they were having that battle. I think he was also battling with George. Um, Mick was trying to make the most of the situation, which has been the fight that they've had all year. Um, the car has been dog crap from the start and and he's the defending formula two world champion and he was put in a spot that is an unfortunate spot you know it, it's akin to some other champions of the past we're having to start in a very small team or a team that isn't very good and the hope is he shows potential and something opens up and he can move up but of course we only have 20 cars on the grid so uh, the fact that he went and battled both Williams cars today and seemed to have uh, uh, an advantage at times is interesting. Uh, I mean, maybe Williams has just switched off to this. I mean, George didn't, he got out qualified by Latifi. So that tells you a lot about what was going on in his head um, this weekend and what has really been going on for the last couple of months, ever since he did most of the work um, to get uh, their constructors position. The, uh, I think Mick Schumacher will take away from this year. You know, he got a lot of experience, ran all these circuits. Everyone speaks about Mick Schumacher's ability in the second year. He's always done that in his career where the second year or multiple years in, he gets much better. Trying to take anything away from what he has to drive on a weekly basis, it's very difficult. But I think he's going to be all right in the long run. And he's made he's had good solid drives over the year he's actually qualified the car into q2 i mean it, there the potential is there and that's the positive thing really because for you know i've been on here many times and i've i've spent my time basically roasting um that organization but the fact of the matter is that is the one bright spot about their organization is Mick Schumacher is, is somebody who they can build around and really lead a team, I think, in the long run, if they're ever going to rise up and compete um, in Formula One. I think he's a good person to build around. Yeah, without a doubt. And I think the toughest thing for Haas in that regard is actually probably keeping him long term because he's going to want to move up the grid. And if you can't do it at Haas, he'll do it somewhere else. Of course, he's a Ferrari uh, young driver as well. So he's part of that academy. So, yeah, uh, I mean, not a bad race by Mick Schumacher. I think he did all he could today, really. And 14th place, one of his better finishes this season. Um, so, yeah, there were six drivers that didn't finish. I think we've mentioned most of them at some point. Sergio Perez, he had a mechanical failure right towards the end of the race. Uh, ended, up, ended up dropping out of third place. Uh, Nicholas Tifi, he, of course, he, he went into the wall. Uh, I think he just lost grip on his on his rear tyres and slid into the wall. Antonio Giovinazzi appeared to have a gearbox failure. He wasn't really doing anything before that. Likewise, Kimi Raikkonen as well wasn't really anywhere during his final race. If you want to hear more about Kimi Raikkonen, we did do a farewell special. So do check that out. That's available on the all the usual platforms and the f1chronicle.com website. Uh, yeah, but Kimi just sort of, I think he had a brake failure. He slid wide, knocked his front wing, went into pits to retire. And finally, George Russell, this race was so eventful. I can't remember what happened to him, to be honest with you. Can someone remind me, please? <laughs> uh, I, I don't even know where Russell finished. Well, he didn't finish. So he went out oh, of the race. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry, uh, sorry, what that? Uh, I'll just have a look. Um, 
generally can't remember what it was now. I think I think it was some sort of um, some sort oh, of mechanical f- failure. Yes, yeah. So so he 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 went to Upshest into fourth or fifth. Yeah. Um, and then and then gearbox. They, yeah, and, and then and then the car basically went long, no harm. Um, and then and then he and then he had a drivetrain error and it just spluttered to a halt. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, now, yeah. Quite a few gearbox problems, but then again, it's expected in the last race because we're pushing it to the absolute limit as usual. Only three mm. or four, as it worked out to be for most teams, anyway. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, and of course, people like Bottas having like seven engines for the season when he meant to have two. But there you go, them's the rules, and they made the most of them. Um, but yeah, so I'll just mention as well that if you leave us a five star review on iTunes, uh, we will give you a shout out at the start of the show. And be sure to enter our free competitions as well to win some free merch. If you leave us a five star review on iTunes, if you leave a comment on the video proper itself, not just the live stream. Or if you subscribe to our YouTube channel, that's three chances to win some free merch uh, from our store, f1chronicle.com forward slash store. Um, let's, I mean, this is, it just seems a bit pointless in a way because it is the last race of the season, everything's decided. But let's give, let's give our takes on driver of the day today. Kimi Raikkonen won driver of the day, but obviously that was because it was his final race. If we're going to give a, a serious driver of the yeah. day today, you know what? I'll I'll play neutral. I'll play neutral. I'll give it to I'll give it to Carlos Sainz. Third place in the Ferrari. Very solid result. Kept out trouble. Kept his nose clean. Kept his tie as well as well. Tom, do I really have to ask who driver of the day is for you? Yeah, you do. Because I'm going to agree with you. And I'm going to say Carlos Sainz. Oh, 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 I didn't see that coming. I know. I, a lot of people would be expecting me to say Max Verstappen. It'd be very yes. easy to say Max Verstappen, but he did he did it when it mattered. But signs for me did the most impressive drive of the day. Fair enough, he outperformed his car. Some would say, you know, to get up exactly. there like that. Phil, who's your take for driver of the day? I was gonna go and say Yuki Sonoda. I mean, I agree with the, um, I agree with the Carlos signs um, for both you guys. I, but I, I say with Yuki, we've talked about it on here, Tom. We all have had our moments with uh, young young Yuki and how he's looked like uh, Takuma Sato 2.0 at many times. And I think that's the thing. This is Takuma Sato 2.0. He has such potential and this talent. And today on a new adjusted, like he's shown that you guys have already said it with how he, um, he adapted very well here on newer circuits. Well, now he has experience. I talked about it with Mick. He's rookie of the year. He struggled. He's had a lot of mistakes. And of course, you know, Pierre Gasly carried the team. But I think now a race like this, beating Pierre, um, great qualifying run, that's something he can build on. And he's very, and he seems very cool and very laid back and it's easy going. I do think, though, he, he wants some more. And I know he thinks he can do more. And we'll see how that affects, if that'll mean he'll make more mistakes or or if he's going to improve. But I think it was a positive performance for him, honestly. Uh, And there's been plenty of negatives this year. So I I think Yuki did a great job today. And for Red Bull in regards to their future and what they're looking at and who they're going to have to move up, he's next on the list. So he needs to build himself up and build up his, you know, intensity and other things to make sure he can handle that um, pressure um, in a race like today proves that he could do that with, with additional, you know, work. Yeah, absolutely. A massive, massive building block for him to, uh, to, to raise his game for next year, really. And to be more consistent and I'm sure he can do it. I'm absolutely sure he can do it, but and I hope it goes well for him. But yeah. That, that's a good shout for driver of the day as well. You could argue that he outperformed his car today with a fourth place, ran very long on his tires, made it work, took his chances where it, where it counted a bit like Carlos Sainz to an extent. Um, exactly a very similar race for both of those two. Uh, so I've mentioned that you are part of the Everything uh, F1 team, Tom, but w- what is that and uh, where can people find it? Yeah, so when I'm not sitting under what looks like a silhouette light, because uh, I just realised I look awfully dark, um, <laughs> I am, uh, I'm, I'm part of Everything F1. Uh, so we do... Uh, we do podcasts. We have our Everything Up On podcast, which you yourself have been on a few times, George. Um, and we do have some really good guests and usually sort of natter about the race that's coming or the race that's just gone or any other F1 news. You know, we probably wind down for a bit during, during the during the Christmas break. 
Um, but across social media, you can find us at Join EF1 uh, across Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, we have a Facebook group as well, which is the Everything F1 Paddock, um, where where we share all, all, all kinds of all kinds of articles, dank memes, anything else you could name. Um, we have the website, which is the Everything F1 website, and finally our YouTube channel, which is Everything F1. Yep, definitely go and check their show out. They have some fantastic guests on. And yeah, they have a great Facebook page as well, which is uh, genuinely how I get a lot of my uh, fun news these days, to be honest with you. Uh, <laughs> Phil, so I mentioned that you are part of the Grip, the Grip Ship podcast, the GSP. What is that and where could people find it? Yeah, Georgia, GSP, Grip Ship podcast, or close to 90 episodes around nine, or just uh, we're going to be at episode 91 this coming week. Uh, you've been a guest on there too. Uh, you know, the we talk about all things motorsports. We talk about world motorsport. We talk about American motorsport. So Formula One, IndyCar, NASCAR, et cetera. As long as it goes fast, we generally talk about it on the Grip Strip podcast. We talk about the NFL and other things. Myself and Josh, uh, we're on most platforms where you can listen to podcasts, Apple, Amazon. Um, we're on Podbean. That's our sharing site. But uh, you can find the Grip Strip podcast. And um, thanks again, as always, for uh, having me on and for uh, another uh, great discussion about Formula One. Love this sport. Uh, may have not went the way that I personally wanted to go, but the fact of the matter is it was a battle the whole way. And um, we'll come back again in 2022 with plenty of stuff to talk about. So um, thanks again, George, and to the whole um, F1 Grid Talk team, the F1 Chronicle, and your website, Sportlight Pro, which I've written for too, um, for all the opportunities and all the time. Oh, I'm but, more than welcome, Phil. It's yeah. always great having you on. Sorry, Tom, go on. No, I, I, just, I just want to add something to the back of that, of what you just said, Phil, and this goes to both of you because you're both Hamilton fans. It's nice to see and nice to talk to fans of the rival driver, of, of, of my favourite driver. It's nice to talk to you about this pretty soon after such a titanic title fight. And obviously the manner in which it all happened, all the rest of it. It's so nice to talk to two mature adults about it. <laughs> yeah. For the most part. And Ray, you uh, can find part. that on the internet it's these days, days isn't it? it? <laughs> yeah. And, and it, it's, it's just nice to hear that you're both so magnanimous in defeat. Because for a long time today, I thought this, I thought I was going to be the one doing that. And then obviously, you know, the wind's changed. So thank you both for for really, really interesting podcast. Oh, no, Absolutely. Thank Thanks, you man. for yeah, and thank you for coming on and not being all you know show offy and everything like well, a lot of Verstappen uh, fans will. You know, it goes both yeah, ways. That, that, you got to be respectful. So well, it, it, exactly. And 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 whilst I am happy that Max won, he did have an element of luck, like I said. And hmm. Lewis put up such a good fight this year. And I would say, can we do it next year? But I don't think I could take it next year. <laughs> yeah. There's not enough blood pressure medication or other medications no. for me to get through another year like this. This is the third time that's been happened in his career, and I'm, it probably took another ten years off my life, anyways. Um, <laughs> I'm I'm not really capable of this. I mean, you guys are much younger than I am, so you have a lot more time in life. Uh, I don't know, but the fact of the matter is, made the young boy earn it, and he did, and. Um, it's it's going to be something to see what both Red Bull, what Mercedes, with their new driver combination, how that how that all goes. Lewis has always responded after we're losing a world championship. He's he's going to be like he's Lewis next year is going to drive like a man possessed, and yeah. he's going to have a teammate that's very motivated and isn't going to be as passive. Um, so that'll make the battles for the second drivers very good. And then you add everything that's gone on behind them with the Ferrari and McLaren and all these other drivers. It's a very positive in that sense. I think there's a lot to look forward to. There are things that have to be affected that changed and looked at, but this world championship was something, I mean, I Netflix is probably going to gain a millions of subscriptions after this but um though this has been a world championship that was needed um after many years of course of lewis domination um now there's people that are going to want to say hey there's a chance that lewis isn't going to win so um it looks good and um it's necessary there always is change there's always a um it always happens we talk and so i'm 
we'll see what happens though for 2022. Yeah, there is a lot to look forward to. And, you know, we've got we've got our season review coming out tomorrow. Like I mentioned, I believe it'll be at 8 p.m. Uh, UK time. So we're going to look for we're going to look back and go over all this year, go over the main highlights and everything. Uh, we'll do all that tomorrow. And also, obviously, next year, when the time comes, we'll be previewing the upcoming season. But it's, it's bound to be interesting just because the regulation changes alone. But there's a lot of very interesting driver moves. And as well, obviously, we have a new champion, and we, this, you know, and obviously Lewis is going to respond to that. We could have some new teams We've got there challenging as well. If Ferrari get a great car, you would not put past the likes of Sainz and Leclerc even challenging for the championship. I think they're both ready, to be honest with you. But yeah, we'll look forward to that, of course. Um, just want to say thank you as well. I mean, I don't mention the, the live chat itself too often, but we've had an absolutely incredible turnout here. So thank you everybody that's jo- that's joined live and gone through all this with us. Uh, it's F1 Grid Talk. Formula One Grid Talk on YouTube if you guys want to go on there because we do go out live on YouTube before the show goes onto the regular podcasting platforms. And we've passed 350 subscribers as well. I think while this podcast has been going on, to be fair, I swear it wasn't that high before. So we're heading towards 400 subscribers on the YouTube channel there, which is massive. So again, thank you so much. That is that is great. That is a really fantastic turnabout, turnaround from you guys. Um, yeah, and we're also available on Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon Music, Verbal, Omni Studio, on Pocket Cash. Just search for the F1 Grid Talk and all of those. And we can check out our back catalogue of shows on all those platforms as well as the F1 Chronicle website. We have over 150 episodes now. We'll be topping 200, maybe even topping 250 at some point next year. 23 races to look forward to. So that's 69 regular season episodes alone. So there's a lot, there's a lot more F1 action to go through. And obviously, if you want to relive this season, go back and enjoy it. We've reviewed every single race, except for the Belgian Grand Prix, which wasn't really a race. That's the only exception. Every other major session we have covered and previewed and everything. So yeah. Uh, thank you very much, guys, for joining us. As always, I really do appreciate it. Thank you, man. Anytime. And we'll be back tomorrow to review the 2021 season. Will anything come of that protest from Mercedes? We'll tell you in that episode. But until then, thank you very much and goodbye. Yeah, it's been a huge... I'm honestly, I, I normally... I normally read out all the comments on the live chat, but I've got no chance. They, there's literally, they've gone so many. I didn't realize this, but they only refresh it so much. So the ones that, that, that what, the guys that put comments in right at the start, I can't even see them. It doesn't even go back that far. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll read out some of them. Um, let's have a look. Uh, well, Connor Walker's put a lot of comments in, but only one of them showing up on here because you've got him in early, of course. That's worked against you this time once for Connor. Uh, once, yeah. Connor yeah. Once, yeah. Sorry, um, It's all right. We can only see so far back. But he says here, last thing from me, this will go this will go a bit under the radar because the race ended up being super exciting. But without crashes, this circuit has no place ending the season. Should be Brazil, but money talks. I 100% agree. Yeah. I mean, yeah. To, be, to be fair... I was going to mention that, actually, yeah. To be fair... I think the changes they've made have improved the track. I think it really is a lot better, but it's by no means the best track. It's, it's okay. You know what? I'll say it. It's all right. It's a lot better than it was before for me. I think that whole shoe at the back end of the track is a lot better. I think the fact they got rid of the chicane, that's better. I think the fact that they opened up the hotel section, it's more of a sweeping loop now. It's a lot faster. I think that I generally think the track's all right and you can pass, you can battle. But it's not on the level of the likes of Silverstone, Brazil, Suzuka, all these classic tracks. But yeah, money talks and we'll always go to these places because of that. Yeah. Yeah. No, so- the race has won in three dictator-run countries to finish the world championship or whatever. I or two of them at least, so whenever. It's a, it's it's I mean that track is not a has never really been considered a great track and it wasn't good for its original configuration. I'll say it was that it, awful, I, wasn't it? It, it was awful, wasn't it? It was awful. And now at least it's passable. Um, no. That's about all you can say about it. But yeah, if it was Brazil, I'll tell you, it would have been a heck of a lot more entertaining. Oh my God. Can you imagine? I, I mean, it was, it was party atmosphere enough this year and that was the yeah. fourth to last round. Yeah. So <laughs> if it's the season finale, it would have been unbelievable. Yeah. It would have been incredible. Yeah. Um, I do wonder, sorry, George, I do wonder sorry. if um, with the new regs next year, if the track would be a bit better for racing. I hope so. Mm, I think so. 
I don't know if it'll be as good as what they plan, but I, I think it'll help overtaking. I want to get to the point where DRS isn't a thing. I think I've, I've literally spoke about this before on the F1 yeah, podcast. You know, I feel like it's the DRS is a necessary evil in, in F1 because otherwise it just would barely have any overtaking. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I just wanted to get to the stage where we don't need it anymore because I feel like we need it to have passing. Otherwise, it'd, it'd just be really boring watching the races. Um, Colin Walker also says thank you to the whole Grid Talk team for providing entertainment through the whole season. And yeah, thank you for your support, Connie. You're almost on every show, even though some of them are at very unsociable hours for Ke- for Canada, which I believe you are from Canada. So yeah, um, got a few people in the comments saying that it's a fix, it's a conspiracy that uh, Pande Mutz has put almost as if those accidents were designed to bring the field together. The FIA wanted this result, period. I, I disagree yeah. with that wholeheartedly. Yeah. I mean, we've been through this, some of these conspiracies. Um, I don't buy that, to be honest. I, I feel like a lot, I think a lot of people, if it went the other way, if the, let's say the race ended under the safety car, people would be saying, oh, the FIA have fixed the result in favour of Mercedes. They've made it a non-event in the last few laps. You know, you, know, you win losing, you, you win some and you lose some. And now it's won seven world titles. That's what a lot of people seem to be forgetting right now. The guy's had incredible success. You know, he's had some unlucky seasons, had some unlucky moments, but that's sport. And he's competed for world championships basically pretty much every outside year. of a couple. Of, yeah, pretty mm-hmm. much every year his entire career since he's came into Formula yeah. 20, and, yeah, 2013, probably not. And not, yeah. And I think 11 and 9. 9, 11, 13 probably it would be lesser. Definitely nine and thirteen, yeah. but they're but the only ones, aren't they? Yeah, but he still won a race in every year that he's competed in F one. Yeah, and qualified on pole in at least one race in every year he's competed in F one. Yeah, and and he has come either first or second every year since twenty fourteen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. I didn't realize that. Yeah, it's it's incredible the guy's success at the end of the day. Um, Max Verstappen, of course, again, to congratulate him. You know, he's got a hell of a future in, in front of him as well. I really do think that. Um, both of them are incredible drivers, and it's about it's about time that people stop. This is why I've got off of Twitter. I've said it many times. It's about time that people stop attacking each other and, and just enjoy it. It's like it's like the whole it's completely different, but the whole, it's like the whole Messi and Ronaldo thing in football. Just enjoy it. Enjoy these fantastic races, these fantastic athletes going at it all season long. It, that that's it's been a hell of a ride and a lot of us have enjoyed it and uh, you know I, I don't want to hear people souring what's happened at the end of the day you can you can say conspiracy and all this and that but let's just enjoy it I mean I think a lot of us have to be fair I think all of us have on 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 our show anyway I think most of us remain very civil throughout all of it really yeah yeah I mean that's it's something I mean that's where we're like that's being adults. And that's actually behaving like adults. That's a problem in our society today, unfortunately. But when it comes to racing, I mean, it's a sport. At the end of the day, um, there's always going to be a winner in one winner and one loser. There's always, and in this case, one winner and 19 that don't come home with the big trophy. And in, it's it's something where you have two teams. There's a lot of animus. There's a lot of... Um, obvious there's going to be more I feel like there really is never going to be a uh, consent like I think they'll be able to coexist but in the grand scheme of things it's competition you want to beat everybody mm-hmm. and um, for most of the year if you to be fair Red Bull was the better car the better team they had the better driver so yeah. in the end the best the better team, the better car, and the better driver with one lap to go did it. So hmm. you have to take it for what it is in the, in the, in the, it's a 23 race world championship. It's not a, it, it ended up being a one lap shootout, but it was like, it's not the NASCAR format or there's a resets and playoff and gimmicks. It's not NHRA where they do resets of points. You know, it's nothing like that. You have to earn the most points over 22 races and be 23 next year to be the world champion. There's no elimination of, of results like they used to have. So Hmm. it's, you take it for what it is. You make the most of the situation and Red Bull did what they had to do. um, And Max Verstappen did what he had to do. And Lewis Hamilton 
went and made him earn it. And that's what that's what a guy who's as good and one of the greatest of all time would do. Yeah. Um, and that's never that isn't going to change no matter how many people want to hate on him or Max or whatever. You can't deny Max's talent and ability. Um, I can I personally will question some aspects, but the real of of what he does or how he goes about it. But the reality is he's one of the best talents that's come into Formula One in a very long time, and mm-hmm. he's going to be very difficult to um, battle and knock off the the top step because he his hunger and determination is is um is generally unmatched so um on the grid right now but there are a lot of there are a lot of young tough competitors out there behind these wily veterans the hamiltons uh, alonzos and vettels of the world that are still on the grid but there's a lot of young talent out mm-hmm. there and there's a lot of young talent that isn't even anywhere close to getting on the grid because of the lack of cars that could be out there and really make something happen so there is a there hopefully will be a, an influx of that talent to really make this fight continue um, and make Max continue to have to earn um, them world championships on the track and and Red Bull actually do their job too uh, off off the racetrack with their cars and teams and all that. Yeah, you know it's the the future for the ones very bright in that regard. There's some fantastic drivers. I mean, Oscar Piastri is the one of the ones that you can think of that's not on the grid for next year, despite being the runaway F2 champion this year. But this this time will come. He's the Alpine test driver for next year, and hopefully you'll get a seat in 2023. But there we go. Um, I just want to get through these comments as quick as I can, as many as I can. Um, so Silver Surfer here has asked, uh, is there any chance for the decisions to be overturned which can change the championship results? So I think what he's trying to say there is, i.e., can they do anything post-race to change the championship results? Absolutely, yes, they can. Uh, Michael Schumacher in 1997 uh, being the one I can think of the most. I mean, it didn't end up changing the championship result, but they did give, they did disqualify him after the race. So they can change things, but it's only yeah. if they can find, if Mercedes can find a new and substantial evidence is the wording, isn't it, Tom? Yeah, and the thing is, the, the one point that they have brought up Max on is that he overtook under the safety car, which he didn't. He got very close. He didn't overtake. He was level, wasn't he? Let's be honest. Yeah, here. yeah, yeah. He, he, he was level. He was very aggressive doing that, to be honest. I was surprised when he was doing that. I'm just like, that's what you do in I'm, the F1 game. <laughs> I, I, I wasn't surprised at all to him. Dude. He was on a set of sauce and he was, he, was, he, was, he was literally looking at Hamilton going, oh, fuck yeah, I want a ham sandwich for dinner. Um, <laughs> and that's and that's absolutely, that's absolutely what he had down into turn four. Um, but um, the, the, the bigger issue here is with the FIA and the way this the, the, these these final few laps were conducted and what Mercedes are taking protest with. If something is found guilty, or sorry, if the FIA do find something, the only real thing I can see is that they null the entire race. Which all it will do is still hand the championship to Verstappen, yeah, because he'll still be ahead on on a win, yeah. So, take that what you will. There's not anything from what I can see that will cause Verstappen to lose a position. Yeah, no, he, I agree. O- he overtook cleanly. No issues with the overtake. He was behind or level. When it comes to the safety car, he did not overtake under the safety car. Um, and Mercedes are appealing the decision. They're not appealing specifically against something for Sapp and did like they did in Saudi, and rightly so they did in Saudi. Mm. So I I get that it is a bit of a shambles, but how many times have we said that this year with the FIA? Um but when, but uh, what well, you got to think with Michael Massey, right? Is think of think of what was to to play for today. There were what four or five laps left, and he had Total Wolf barking in one ear, he had Christian Horner yapping in, in the other ear, and yep. he's trying and he's trying to figure out which cars need to move out of the way. You know, you know which cars going to unlock themselves whilst maintaining the safety of the track. And I'll tell you an issue I have from today is when Toto, at one point, I think it might be when the VSC came out or possibly when the safety car came out, 
So, so it came over the radio and said, um, some, it said something like, oh, we don't need this. This is, you know, this is... I can't remember exactly what he said, but Toto insinuated it was there to hold up Mercedes. And I disagree with that. And given Horner got, got, a, got told off in Qatar for questioning officials, someone needs to have a word with Toto because those flags were out for safety. And mm. the yellow, the double wave yellows, the VSC safety cars, they are always out for safety. There were marshals on the track recovering the CFI's car. So how you can say that that doesn't need a safety car? I get why Toto was mad and all the rest of it, you know. Um, but that was bang out of order for, yeah. him, to, for him to suggest that. Yeah, it definitely needs a safety car for that, 100%. I said it straight away. There's debris, there's a car on the track. It's a not, it's pretty fairly blind corner as well when you're going into it. So, no, they absolutely did the right exactly. thing there. And um, some people have, have mentioned about how there should have been a red flag brought out for that. Yeah. And I, no, and I, you know, there shouldn't have been. Yeah. And uh, Troy saw you later. Yeah, we discussed that on, we actually discussed that when you were out there. Oh, okay. I put yeah. it, I brought it up there as a possibility. And Tom explained it very well in that comparing it to Mick's situation last week where there was a wall issue um, versus here where it might have been they had room to get around uh, Latifi, number one, but then also they were able to recover the car. So Tom um, explained that very well um, during the show um, where that was something and might have been that was something I saw and I thought about it and. You know, I'm like, that makes sense, but it's true. Um, you know, Saudi wasn't really a racetrack. It was basically a roller coaster with cars. So, I mean, you're not, you're going to have a hard time recovering cars there compared to what they can here. Mm. Yeah, no, I'm with you there. No, I didn't realize you guys talked about that while I was, uh, while I was recovering the Wi-Fi. Um, Troy Soleil, I'm probably saying your name wrong, so I do apologize for it. But Troy has uh, also put his transparency a problem with uh, the stewards and the FIA. And... I think to an extent it is because uh, we don't hear anything from the stewards and it's something completely different and it's some, well, not completely different. It's racing of a kind, but it's something very different is that I remember a good few years ago, for the first time they, they put cameras and recording equipment in the stewards, whoever makes the decisions anyway, in horse racing for a, for a horse race here in the UK. And it was very enlightening because it was like, oh, wow, you actually get to see the reasoning for this. You get to see the jockeys go up to them and, and talk to them and stuff like that and, you know, review the decisions. They give their case. You know, we don't see any of that. We don't see any of that in F1. And I feel like that frustrates people. It's a bit like VAR in football, which is a source of all kinds of frustrations. Don't get me wrong. But one of the good things it does allow for is concrete evidence on things like offsides and things like the ball going over the goal line. Um, and you can't you can't argue some of those because it's like, well, VAR has reviewed it. That's what the camera says. Before it was like, oh, no, it went over. Oh, did it? But we, we don't see any of that in, in F1. And I think because of all the controversy this season, we see what Michael Massey, we've got a camera on him, but he, he's not a steward. He doesn't make those decisions. He doesn't hand out the penalties. Um, so I feel, I feel like going forward, maybe that'd be something to do. But I also don't see F1 doing it, to be honest, which is a bad thing, really. Yeah, uh, I've just seen something not about Hamilton and Verstappen. Go on. You know, we said Alpha Tari came sixth in the championship. Yeah. Let me let me just double check this. On my thing here, they got 142 to Alpine's 155. 154. Oh. Yeah, five. Yeah. Thanks. Never mind. I thought my math was off. <laughs> no, they still missed out. They did. They made up a lot of ground today. But it wasn't enough. The gap was really big, like that between McLaren and Ferrari. Uh, let's have a look. Let's try to get a few, through a few more of these. Rex is absolutely tearing the kitchen apart downstairs. I can hear him. <laughs> he's not had his midday nap today, so he's getting adventurous, like switching the Wi-Fi off, as you guys experienced. <laughs> oh God, honestly, the, the wonders of a yeah. toddler. Um, uh, go on, sorry. I got something I want to say about the, this driver of the day vote. <laughs> go on. Here we go. Um, when people were saying, oh, vote for Kimmy, vote for Kimmy, vote for Kimmy, right, I get that people want to vote for Kimmy um, because everybody loves his persona and the way and the, 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 the sort of the way he is and everything, but Driver of the Day is not there for 
sort of like who you know it's like there is a, I, I, it doesn't really mean much but it's not there for just to be like oh well Kimi's retiring so let's give him driver of the day it's like it's not really what it's there for it's a bit like when you were in a school and you used to vote for like the specky kid or something to be like to, to, to be like your form leader or something um, it's like you, you, you're there to, to vote for the driver who you think has done the best job of the day and for Kimi to get the vote when there's a title fight going on in front of him when you're retired and he he hasn't really given a damn since I'm surprised he even came back after he got COVID. I'm surprised he didn't just say to to um commit so you know just just do the rest for me or something. Um so so you know I, I get why people do it, but that's not it's not really what it's there for. Maybe I'm reading too much into it, but it's it 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 is a bit to me it's a bit sort of eh, whenever I see someone say like oh let's vote for Kimi for driver of the day. It's like I think people did it for Hulkenberg when he was in his last year in 2019 as well. And it's just maybe I'm just being old and grumpy, but <laughs> oh. No, I, I know what you mean. I'm, I'm just going through the comment. Like again, thanks to all the responses. God, there's so many here. Um, for those getting a bit frustrated throughout the regular show, I guess you guys are probably new to this. We do do a post show, which we're doing now, where we go through all of them. So we, we don't respond during the live show, uh, the main show itself, because there'd be just too many to get through and just kind of interrupt the flow. But we do answer you guys' comments after as many as we can anyway. Um, so people rightly pointing out that Max might have got maybe an inch at most <laughs> during the safety car. It didn't mean anything in the end. He still restarted behind him, obviously. Um, let's, have a, let's go through some of these. A lot of them are the same. Just arguing against themselves about, about the result and everything. People saying that, you know, they've had to break their own rules just to break Hamilton. No, they haven't. That's not what's going on here. Um, Rob is trending on Twitter as well, which is not a surprise, I guess, for some people. Uh, let's have a look. Yeah, here we go. A bit of positivity. Poor Seigel has put, how about the sportsmanship from Hamilton at the end? Very pretty commendable, in my opinion. Yep. I agree. Honestly, after everything that had happened with, with the way that with the way it ended, and this is not a slight against Hamilton at all. I totally would have got it if he felt a bit robbed and aggrieved. But he went over to he went over to Christian Horner first, I believe, and shook his hand. And then when he got a chance to, he shook Ham, um, shook Verstappen's hand as well. And during the podium ceremony, he also applauded him when he came on to take his winner's trophy. So absolutely fair enough. Two great yeah. champions, two great drivers with a lot of respect for each other. And I just wish all of the fans projected wish, that as well to be honest with you but it's always going to be the way people are always going to get salty and annoyed yeah i i i, I wish f1 fans had the same level of respect as these two drivers have 100 percent. but at the f1 twitterverse would be a lot friendlier and a nicer place than it was but there we go let's have a look strategy you'll see the safety car robbed it no Absolutely not. Nope. There had to be a safety car. Uh, has the Mercedes, no, I, I, has the Mercedes been cl- complaint been resolved? I don't think it has. No, I, no, I don't no. expect it to be so anytime soon, but I also don't expect anything to happen with it. Uh, so that's uh, a few I, times I'm, for all I'm this. I'm looking at the sporting regulations right now. Okay. And let me just read out what Article 48.12 says. This is, this is the most important bit. I'm reading this word for word, and I will drop a link for anybody who wants to read this. It says, if the clerk of the course considered it safe, considers it safe to do so, and the message, quote, lapped cars may now overtake, end quote, has been sent to all competitors via the official messaging system, any cars that have been lapped by the leader will be required to pass on the lead lap and, uh, sorry, will be required to pass the cars on the lead lap and the safety car. Hmm. So it's they did nothing it, wrong. They did nothing wrong in that regard. No, exactly. It's they, there. They did the right it's, thing. It's, it's just there in black it was a white. bit. It was a bit strange how it sort of got announced last second. I, I don't know. Maybe we received the message a lot after what. Um, yeah, the, the that's teams it. did. I don't know. You don't know how delayed that thing is. Yeah, so sometimes it can be up to two minutes delay. And also, it says if the clerk of the course considers it safe to do so, you know yeah. there could have been a reason the massive didn't consider it safe to do so. 
because it if because the FIA will always look to make sure there's as much racing as possible. Hmm. And if that meant that they had to go for an extra lap and then the drivers had to unlap themselves and then go again, you could argue it wouldn't have been safe to do so. So so for 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 Red Bull to sort of like you know, try, uh, sorry, for Mercedes to try and summon Red Bull for this, I think they are clutching at source a bit. And then forty-eight, oh, massively, point, yeah, yeah. And then forty-eight point eight, it says, with the exception of the cases list, listed under point A or uh, listed under points A to H, no driver may overtake another car on the track, including the safety car, until he passes the line for the first time after the safety car has returned to the pits. So basically, don't overtake before the safety car line. And Mercedes are probably doing this again. I think clutching a bit of straws. You can't blame them for trying. Red Bull would do exactly the same. Yeah. Um, any any team in that position would do the same. Um, hmm. But they're looking at where Max was, you know, practically bumping Lewis along. That's hmm. that's that's what that's looking at. Yeah, yeah. No, that, they're the clutching of straws. Nothing's going to happen from it. I don't know when it's going to get announced. The results. People asking how long does it take them to respond to this sort of thing. It, it could literally be days. And it, it depends on what they investigate. But I, I think they'll have this one wrapped up pretty quickly. To be honest with you, um, I hope so. I hope so too because it puts an asterisk on on the championship and the results, which nobody likes. Nobody nobody likes leaving the circuit and not knowing whether your drivers won or, or whatever. There's no there's no fun in that. I don't, I don't think that's right, to be honest. But sometimes these things take a long time to decide, um, especially when it's high stakes like this. Uh, Troy has also put Vettel under the, one under the safety car in 2012. There's no reason for them to go back racing just to let the cars pass. But yeah, I mean, that's, that's a very good point. 2012, Brazil uh, crashed with the rest, I think it was, and the, the race under the safety car, and Vettel yeah. won the championship by a few points because of that. The difference was in 2012, it was hammering down with rain. That's also true, yeah. But you don't have to rate, end the race under green flag conditions. We've seen a few under the sa- under the safety car. There's a few where you don't even have to see any green flag running, like we saw in Belgium earlier this year. People got people remember that. Yeah. So, um, let's have a look. I'm gonna give. Um, let's have a look. Just a few more. Well, one last comment. I'll pick out but the next good one I see. Sorry if I don't read your guys' comments out, but I think there's literally hundreds in here. <laughs> there's a lot. There's a hell of a lot. Um. A, lot, a few people saying about they should have red flagged the race again. No, because no. the barrier wasn't damaged. There's no reason. Yeah, uh, or they, and they or they didn't have something where it was obstructing the cars getting through. That would be a way. Exactly. If there was like a multi-car incident, like I don't know, a couple of the incidents last week, you you had no chance uh, <sighs> to really get through. So, um, I mean, I thought about it for a second. I brought it up to Tom. If you want to listen, if you probably, if you're here and you posted, you probably heard that part, but Tom explained it very eloquently about why they wouldn't have went to um, a red flag situation, which would have neutralized the race um, in that spot. Yeah, exactly. Right. Okay. So yeah, I'm going to leave it there. A lot of these comments are getting pretty nasty now. Not going to lie. Well, like I said, thank you to you guys who've remained respectful throughout the live stream. And yeah, like we'll be back. Like I said, we'll be back tomorrow to review the season. I'm sure you guys can get your opinions across on the 8 p.m. UK time. Thank you, lads, for joining us. And, uh, and yeah, hope everybody enjoyed the show. Here's 2000. Here's 2021 been done, and here's 2022 next year as well. Hopefully, some more great racing. Absolutely. All right, let's.